Well, time for a bit of minimalism today as we look at the Quad FM3 tuner. Now, this unit was produced by Quad from, I think, around 1971 to 1981, so it straddled pretty much all of the 70s and just a little bit of the 80s, until it was replaced by the more modern-looking Quad FM4. And that was a bit of a departure, really, because if you look at the Quad FM2, here's a picture of it, it doesn't look a lot different from the FM3. The big difference, which you can't necessarily see from the front, although you can probably tell from the slats on the top, is that the FM2 had valves in it, whereas this, the FM3, was their first solid-state unit. In fact, the FM2 and the FM3 didn't look massively different to the FM1. I mention this because although I don't have an FM2, I do in fact have an FM1. You can see it's quite similar design. There's not really a lot of difference there. This would have been sort of mid-50s, I think. So in 25 to 30 years, there wasn't really a lot of change. Now, I'd like to be able to show you this working, but I can't because... This needs a custom power supply. Because this is valves, this requires a 330 volt DC and 6.3 volt DC or AC feed, 6.3 volt being for the valve heaters. That would have come from the power amplifier, I think, in this one. And I don't have that power amplifier and I don't um, have a suitable supply for it. I could probably build one and I may well do that. We might come back to this in a later video. But at the moment, all I can do is point at it and that's it. So let's get back to the subject of today's video, the FM3. Not a lot to say from the front really, you've got a tuning control, it's FM only, hence the name. Actually I think they may have done a tuner which had AM for different markets, but I don't believe they ever did one in this country. If we turn it round, we can see that it has a little bit more stuff on the back, but not a massive amount. The interesting things you will notice, there's no on and off switch on this. And there's also this uh, DIN socket which has left, right and mono outputs. The only control you've got on the back is this mute threshold which is for your interstation muting. So do you want, to, do you want it to mute the static if you're off station you can tweak that a bit to, you know, if you're in a weaker signal area. And you've got the usual, um, you know, aerial options of a 300 ohm flat cable or 75 ohm coax. Now the important thing about this, this is true of a lot of quad stuff, is you're not really supposed to use them on their own as standalone units. The reason why there's no on and off switch is that on the quad 33 preamp, you'd have had a switch to select the tuner, and when that happened it would have energised the power supply for this mains input here. Therefore your preamplifier would have been your on and off switch. Also, quite often when you're listening to FM stereo, it's a bit weak, it's a bit hissy, you switch to mono to get rid of the hiss. Again, there's no mono stereo switch on this unit. That was done in the preamp. It simply switched between either using these two pins or this pin. Now, I don't have a Quad 33. Quad 33s are very nice, but they go for quite a lot of money. The tuners you can get a lot cheaper. Uh, so they're quite good value, really. But as you saw the valve one, it can be a bit difficult to get them to work without the surrounding ecosystem. Uh, you can still get these little three pin mains connectors without much trouble really. You don't have to pay stupid prices for them on eBay. You can get them for less from RS and CPC and places like that. And I've just um, connected one of those to a standard three pin input. So um, we can get that powered up and we can have a listen to it. Well, obviously we're stretching the um, mission statement of this channel a little with this, as we often do, um, in that this is a tuner. It's a piece of hi-fi equipment. It's not a radio as such. It doesn't have any speakers. It doesn't even have a headphone output, so I've fed it through the mixer. I've fed both the mono and stereo outputs in so we can have a listen. I think I've got the muting, the interstation muting on at the moment. Let's see if we can tune something in. Four points for Sanders and George Spann. And in the lead with eight points, it's Shanine Salmon. So that's a mono tuned into Radio 4 there. Ask the two of you, Ian and George, to that's it on stereo, the and in the stereo you can hear there is a bit of hiss. Then invite you to reveal it. The nearest answer will get the advantage. Here comes your tie-break question. At an auction of Sex Pistols memorabilia at Sotheby's, October 2022, a sheet of handwritten... Now, one of the things you notice uh, about these lights here is you've got the stereo uh, indicator that lights up when it gets a stereo signal over here, but you've also got these two tuning lights. 
And the idea is you're supposed to sort of equalise the illumination on these in order to get it to be tuned in properly. I find that quite fiddly and it's quite difficult to get it exactly the same, so I tend to more do it by ear, really. Makes it sound like a bargain, Ian. It is a bargain indeed, Paul. Thanks for complimenting me on my uh, purchasing decision. Now, the other interesting thing that I'd like to um, cover here is these indicators for your favourite stations. Now, you've seen these on some other radios where you have to take the top off and move them around. And in fact, that's what you had to do with the old um, FM1, the valve one that we looked at earlier. I think you had to sort of take the top off, which is a bit more risky given the sort of voltages that were in those things. Um, what they've done on this one, which is a, a, an interesting bit of mechanical engineering here, British engineering at its best, I think, what you do is you push this tuning thing in here. And when you do that, you can sort of grab these and move them around. But of course, where it is isn't quite where your tuning scale is. So you've got to sort of do a bit of advanced planning, really. It's like you've got to shoot ahead of the uh, target. Again, it's one of those very Heath Robinson things, which I really like. And we've got full FM coverage here going up to 108, so that makes it quite a usable set. Be more than happy to help brothers and sisters stay together. But what if you got too attached to them? You'd find it too hard to say goodbye, right? But all... So I think, you know, the sound quality is pretty good. Let's see if I can get Radio 3 on this one. Um, it's less likely to get copyright strikes there, aren't we? Now we're back on Radio 2 again. It's a fairly quiet piece on Radio 3, and where there's some stereo hiss, it's not that bad, really. And there it is again on, on the mono output, but we're not getting the hiss. It doesn't seem to be able to get a very good classic FM signal on uh, its 101.9 round here, although it's quite good on all the other stations up at that end. Um, but classic FM is very weak in this area, but overall I think the sensitivity of it is fairly good. Let's try and go around the scale a bit. into it hang on so three counties there and this get out of it you know the the, the professors the all he's got to do radio cambridge show that will be heart radio one again radio one uk while star radio keeps you entertained east anglian air ambulance star radio giving us an ident very conveniently there so the next one would probably be Classic FM, but I can't find it. If I take the muting off. Yeah, there's Classic FM. With the muting off. But it's a very weak signal. Um, uh, that's hard again. And we can get uh, Kiss as well up here, I think. I guess we can probably get Kiss. Maybe we can't. Let's have to take muting off a bit further. I want to be, because when the world tells you to grow up. Whether it's dance, hip hop, garage, RV, or old school, you know Kiss has you covered. Get the tunes you want from Kiss on the Kiss Cube app. Yeah, there we go. So, um, yeah, not brilliant. I think probably slightly tails off at the top end, I'm guessing, on the reception. You can't really tell with Star and Heart because they're very strong signals here, but Kiss and Classic FM less so. Um, overall, I do like this set. I haven't found anywhere in my house to have a good home for it yet, which is a shame because, you know, as I said, I quite like the styling of it. I like the minimalist feel and the um, scruffy mechanics of uh, 1970s British engineering and the orange and brown stuff. I mean, that, I'm pretty certain we used to have a uh, three-piece suite in the living room in those sort of colours back in the 70s. Anyway, I'll find a place to put it, I think. Um, 
because I do like it so much. And maybe we'll have a look at the uh, 1950s version, the FM1, at some point if I can be bothered to get myself a massive transformer and use lots of expensive 2023 price electricity. <laughs> 